Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien here, and today we're taking a look at the latest technologies from Intel. Uh, obviously, they just recently updated their Xeon platform to third gen, which with it brings along support for all sorts of things like PCIe Gen 4, uh, which Intel really needed to help take advantage of the latest uh, speedy storage protocol. And then it also opens up the faster speeds for persistent memory, their 200 series, which can now operate it at 3200 uh, versus what, the 2666 or whatever was in the prior yeah. gen. So persistent memory gets faster, uh, storage lanes get faster, and we've got new product to take a look at in the P5800X. This is their Optane SSD, which goes up to 1.6 terabytes. These are 800 gig models that we're using and the uh, P5510, which is the TLC SSD, uh, and we're using the 768, so the eight terabyte class SSDs here. Now the platform we're working with is the Intel, I don't know, development platform, I don't even know what you call this. It has a sticker on the top, but I'm not sure you can actually buy this, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, you can't really buy it. This is developed to support Intel's partners that we're going to launch with, uh, with Xeon third gen, so uh, supports Gen 4, as we noted, and all the other uh, new stuff on this board, but it's just limited to these eight drives in front, a couple PCIe slots in the back, not dis destined for uh, to be a production server. They've got plenty of other uh, platforms that'll be released uh, under the Intel branding for partners like Data On, for instance, who uses those two U24 Bay servers. Yeah, and then all uh, Dell and HP and others. Right, we'll take the Xeon technology through their, yeah. their platforms as well. Uh, so what we decided to do to get a better feel for what the server is capable of is put Windows Server 2019 on it, uh, make some uh, different storage pools. We set up eight of these uh, TLC drives. We only have two of the Optane, so we did two of those. And then in the back, what's our PMEM 200 series setup? So we're using uh, two namespaces. Uh, it gives us roughly uh, one terabyte per CPU or two terabytes uh, total. And so for this testing, we installed Windows, as I said, and just looked at bare metal in the box performance. Correct. Okay, so we will do some more work with uh, some additional software defined partners. We already worked with Memverge on the PMEM uh, performance. We'll be looking at some other things there. And we'll be looking at other ways to share this high performance storage out of the box. But for now, we really wanted to get a feel for what it's capable of in this case with Windows, but we'll look at it with Linux and some other things too, uh, to really start to differentiate what you can expect when you look at the performance levels of persistent memory, of Optane SSD, and TLC SSD. So let's go ahead and hit those, uh, those charts and start to work through some of this, because your findings, I think, are pretty consistent with what we expected, but there were a couple uh, things that pop out here. Yeah, so... Overall, when you're looking at um, top performance, it really depends on what you consider to be top performance. Is it throughput or is it latency? Well, and it's workload dependent, right? Depending on queue depth, depending on latency sensitivity, all sorts of other things related to what the application needs. Yeah, and of course, uh, Optane technologies have always had that benefit of uh, low single depth or queue depth or th uh, low thread count uh, workloads okay. where the devices need a heavier queue count to uh, really ramp them up. In this test, if you were looking at just straight line numbers at a heavy uh, workload, you might not think Optane or uh, PMEM is that special. Huh? We have yeah, this uh, chart clearly shows the 5510 is the better choice. Yeah, and in certain areas it might be if you're looking for a top uh, random I/O performance and read, or even the right performance is pretty good. Um, now PMEM is. It's doing pretty well in this uh, workload, and Optane is kind of uh, straggling behind but this isn't really where they shine. It should be noted here that even with just the two Optane drives, you're still at 1.9 million IOPS right edging out the eight uh, P5510. So the right is the right workloads are always where the Optane drives are gonna have an advantage. Yeah. Okay, what else we got? So at latency, uh, even though the uh, two Optane technologies uh, didn't have as much of the peak that uh, the uh, P5510 had, they are a lot lower on average latency. And we'll see this as a common trend across all the workloads where they're dramatically lower than the uh, traditional media. All right, so go back one chart. So here we're looking at the P5510 having a higher total aggregate IOPS number, but then go forward one. 
the Optane technology in both PMM and the 5800X are delivering the IOPS they deliver much faster, much more consistently yeah. is what we're seeing here in this chart. Okay. And now we drill into a uh, single thread, single queue uh, workload. And this is an area where uh, you're going to have a big benefit of uh, the Optane technology. And, uh, and it's important to note that uh, with this particular test, we're uh, testing eight individual P5510s, uh, two individual uh, 50, uh, 5800X drives, as well as two individual namespaces. So you could say, well, divide each of these things by two or divide the uh, P5500 by eight, and they'll roughly see where each drive is uh, coming out. But you could see there's a huge benefit to PMEM and Optane right at those low QDEF levels. Right, although the total aggregate on the 5510 still has a, a nice uh, IOPS count. Yeah, and then when you look at uh, the latency side, it's a huge difference. We're looking at uh, 10 microseconds uh, on uh, read and 11 microseconds write for PMEM, 24, 23 for um, the uh, you know, slightly slower Octane technology, <laughs> right? and then uh, between 81 and 27 microseconds for uh, the P5510. Yeah, so you see the incremental improvements. And here, this is an interesting one to me because we talk about the application sensitivity to latency. And in so many cases of mainstream enterprise apps, it's not going to matter a whole lot. And in those cases, if you fill up a system full of 5510s, you'll be exceedingly happy. Yeah, and as we look at uh, NVMe technology as a, hey, there's different speeds of it. Things can operate in different uh, ways just in the NVMe class itself. There's still a lot of customers coming off of old flash platforms or right. SAT and SAS media mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, well, spinning media or things uh, slower. Right. So, well, yeah, we just get so wrapped up in Intel's uh, pyramid hierarchy of DRAM, PMEM, Optane SSD, TLC SSD, QLC SSD, then on into infinity of cloud and whatever uh, hard drive uh, solutions that sometimes uh, I think we overlook just the the total uh, uplift that Gen 4 gives you on the SSD front, the total performance available to TLC and QLC SSDs that is still really remarkable. Well, yeah, and it's important to note that uh, PMEM uh, Gen 1 versus Gen 2 had a subtle uplift on the uh, DRAM speeds, but the... Uh, the current generation of Optane on the P5800X is a huge improvement from where it was before. Right. Uh, it offered that low queued up performance, but it generally topped out pretty quickly on I.O. and bandwidth. Now it really holds its own against other uh, Gen 4 drives in its class. Right, and we've got a dedicated review on the 5800X if you want to explore that further. Uh, in addition to, as noted, the uh, the Memverge work we did with the, uh, the PMEM200 series. So we'll link to those in the... Uh, in the, the show description here. All right, so what else we got going on on the testing front? So we also tested the AK7030 workload, and this is one where uh, you start to see differences on those uh, lower thread or lower queue areas where the Optane technology will kind of pop up, and then you'll see the areas where uh, in heavier uh, queue depths, the uh, 5510s are just offering an immense performance uplift. Mm -hmm. And this is an area where if you don't need that low latency performance, maybe that's the drive for you to look at. But again, as we drill into uh, the average latency profile, you're talking about latencies that are delivered a, much, a dramatically lower profile than where it is on uh, traditional NVMe uh, with a 5510. Right, okay, so here again, Optane uh, really works the best when latency is a massive consideration. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, we look at our uh, large block transfer test. And this is one where um, it's fun to note and see where uh, the 5800X uh, 5, is going to have its limitation come down to what it can support per drive. You're going to see 6 to 7 gigabytes per second uh, per device. And uh, you're not going to go faster than that unless you add additional drives in. The uh, PMEM, though, uh, being right on the uh, DRAM bus, really doesn't see that limitation per an individual device and a lot of these are rated together uh, in roughly a RAID 0 configuration per CPU in their namespaces and you get this immense performance bo uh, boost from them at uh, at high or low queue up levels. So we mm -hmm. saw 44 gigabytes per second uh, from two namespaces and 14 gigabytes per second on uh, right where uh, the 5800X 50, was 14 and like 11 gigabytes per second right. Right, but you note fairly that that's just two drives. So if we had had eight of those, you could 
basically go 4x those numbers, right? Oh, definitely. Right. And then the P5510 still does a, uh, a nicely respectable job down there leading the way in bandwidth. Yeah, 55 for 54, 55 gigabytes per second is nothing to, uh, uh, well, say anything bad about i mean you're it's a drive that uh it's gonna be you're getting close to what the gen 4 speeds are going to offer there's really no downside to them um and then on the right side you're seeing around 33 gigabytes per second right so the point of some of this work is not to show that one's better or whatever it's to really highlight where each one performs at its best so if you're going to go with a multi-layer uh, storage tiering or or caching setup that you understand that, understand those workloads. And also for applications that can take advantage of the PMM, just knowing uh, what the capabilities are and what those uh, most beneficial workloads are. There are a number of applications out there, uh, a lot of the NoSQL databases, uh, Redis, Aerospike, uh, SAP HANA, there's many software well, partners. And it's important that uh, Optane and the 5510 can't app, uh, can't operate as a memory extension. PMEM can. Right. So we test it in a, uh, uh, in a block configuration, but you can have it as a memory extension as well. Right. Right. And being uh, persistent, it's non-volatile. So that's the big selling point there, that if you use it as a RAM extension, uh, like we did with Memverge, right? If you lose the system when you reboot, it's all it's all there. You don't have to rehydrate all of that, uh, all that DRAM. Overall, um, what leaves you most impressed with the technologies that sit before us? I think it's nice to see PMEM uh, evolving still. A lot of people are concerned, like, is it a one-time thing or is there going to be an iteration after iteration? And we are seeing a lot of benefits there. And then with the 5800X, uh, it has this huge uh, improvement over the first-gen series that came out. And now it's you're not really worried about, is it not offering as much bandwidth and do you have to go to another drive? You can really get it all from one product. Yeah, for me, uh, I like the persistent memory. I think... Uh, Frankly, Intel wants or needs that to be successful for the whole Xeon ecosystem to be really successful uh, because having that Intel throughout gives them a, a massive advantage to be able to optimize workloads. Uh, I really like the, the P5800X in its capabilities. It does cap out at 1.6 uh, terabytes in the capacity, which some will want more. But the problem is that they've got to balance that with the cost of these drives. They are more expensive than the traditional NAND-based drives. But I think we're already hearing from uh, a lot of people we deal with that we'll be seeing these pretty quickly show up in software-defined scenarios where there's a cache or a tier where these, just a couple, can make a huge difference. Yeah, we've seen them make a huge difference in the past. Now it's the drive is immensely more powerful. Right. Well, almost twice as good in certain ways thanks to the Gen 4, right? Yeah. Well, not just Gen 4. I mean, even on the Gen 3 interface, the previous one didn't come close to... Uh, saturating with uh, large block transfers, for example. Right. So generationally speaking, this drive, the Optane SSD, improved the most, I guess, of all the things we're looking at. Uh, and we haven't really explored the new QLC drives. That's on our to-do list. And we've got much more planned for this system. So keep your eyes open for that as we explore more of what's new in the Intel ecosystem. Thanks for tuning in.